Today, we're going to debunk the top five retinoid myths I keep hearing over and over again. Hi, I'm Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy learning more about retinoids and wanna learn more about retinoid related content or retinoid product reviews, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and I would love it if you can give this video a thumbs up. So by now you guys probably already all know the benefits of a topical retinoid that can help with acne, fine lines, wrinkles, and hyperpigmentation. But I still want to briefly talk about really how what they do at the molecular level before we tackle the misconceptions. So retinoids belong to a family of uh, compounds that are essentially related to vitamin A. The active form is called retinoic acid, and that is really the form that goes in and does all the stuff that's supposed to do. Tretinoin is a retinoic acid, which is why tretinoin works so well, but also along with that, the side effects of irritation. We now have a lot of different type of retinoid derivatives, including retinol, retinal, retinal to hide, retinal esters. Essentially, all of these derivatives needs to be converted into retinoic acid to function properly. And what retinoic acid does is it actually goes into the nucleus of the cell and affects gene expression. So what I mean by that, it goes into the nucleus, binds to the receptors of cells, and basically tells the cells to, like for example, make collagen or you know produce certain types of protein that may help with improving skin turnover over or say proteins that reduces inflammation, etc. And because it works at that gene expression level to make proteins, the subsequent benefits that we see clinically is going to take time, which is often why you hear us mention topical retinoid use is really a marathon and not a sprint. And any really benefits come with prolonged, you know, got to give at least three to six months time of use. Now let's tackle the myth. Myth number one is something I see over and over again especially in social media, and that is retinoids than your skin. And to understand why this is completely false, we kind of have to understand a little bit about skin anatomy. So your skin is composed of three layers, the epidermis, the very top layer of the skin, the dermis, and then the subcutaneous fat. And what's in the dermis is collagen, elastin, and other cellular matrix support network that you know kind of is the bulk of the skin that gives our skin that youthful bounciness, and also what we lose over time with age and what sun really degrades. The top layer of the skin, the epidermis, has you know four to five layers depending on the location. And you have the basal layer that keeps making cells and all the cells go through each layer to reach the top, which is that dead layer of the skin, the stratum corneum, that is really kind of a protective layer, if you will. With age, what's happening is that not only we lose collagen in the skin, making our skin look thinner, less elastic, less bouncy, but also the top of their skin, that turnover slows down down and you also have buildup of that stratum corneum so your skin doesn't shed as readily as before. All of that gives you fine lines, wrinkles, but also the appearance of dullness, which is often why maybe feel or see more mature sun damage and aged skin look less radiant is really because that dead layer of the skin, that stratum corneum, it builds up. And not only does it build up, it also is fluffier or looser and not as kind of compact, which is a sign of healthier, less aged skin. And all of that will give off more of a dullness. Now going back to retinoids, as I mentioned, retinoids build collagen with you know improved gene expression and that occurs at the dermal layer. What is happening at the epidermal layer is that the retinoids enhances the cell proliferation and the cell turnover. So if you can imagine a more mature and aged skin, that cell, as it goes through each layer of the skin to reach the top, is slowed down and it's less efficient. What retinoids do is that it makes them more efficient, so it enhances skin turnover. Furthermore, it makes that top layer of the skin, the stratum corneum, more compact as it should in healthier, younger looking skin instead of fluffier. So in essence, what retinoids is doing is, is improving the skin turnover okay, of your epidermis. And because it also contributes to collagen production, overall, your skin is actually thicker not thinner. And that is really what we see and that's been proven on biopsy when we look at skin before retinoid treatment and then after, you know, three to six months of retinoids, when we do biopsies, there are changes in the skin that reflects really what the retinoid is doing. Now, I think a confusion for a lot of people is really that stratum corneum and confusing the effects of a topical retinoid with 
say exfoliants like alpha hydroxy acid. What alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid, what they're doing is they're literally cleaving the cells that are purely on top of the skin, the stratum corneum, making it shed more readily. And that's really the definition of an exfoliant. With that, you are literally thinning out that stratum corneum, but that's not what retinoids do. Retinoids do not shed your skin. It merely enhances the skin turnover and a natural process of skin turnover is normal exfoliation, but it doesn't go and actually cuts the links between the cells in the stratum corneum, like glycolic acid, and thinning out the stratum corneum. So retinoids thickens the skin. It does not thin the skin. And this brings me to myth number two, and that is retinoids increases your risk of sunburns or sun sensitivity. Now, again, going back to that stratum corneum, we know that glycolic or alpha hydroxy acids increase one's risk of sunburn because it literally thins out that stratum corneum, which is really kind of like a protective layer against environmental damage. But retinoids merely enhance enhances the turnover of the top layer of the skin. It does not thin out the top layer of the skin. So it does not increase your risk of sunburn. So yes, you can, and you should use your retinoids all year long. Now, certainly, you know, we recommend sunscreen all year round because that is the best way you can prevent skin damage. And it's the best complement to a topical retinoid use, but you don't purposely need to stop your topical retinoids if you're going on vacation. I know some people worry about, you know, the use of alpha hydroxy acids when they are going somewhere sunny or maybe in the summertime. And I think that's fair, right? But I feel like in general, whether it's AHAs or retinoids, you really shouldn't need to stop any ingredient because of season unless you're not tolerating it. Because in essence, the answer is you should always be wearing sunscreen. <laughs> but again, retinoids do not increase your risk of sunburns like alpha hydroxy acids do. Myth number three is that you should avoid topical retinoids when you're breastfeeding or when you're lactating. Now, this is an area where we don't have a lot of studies and we probably won't really ever just because it's somewhat unethical to study side effects of medication on moms who are nursing. But what we do know is number one, vitamin A exists in breast milk. And two, there's very limited absorption, if any, of topical retinoids that gets past your skin into your bloodstream when you're just using in limited amounts, like most people, most moms do, like using on their face or on their neck, right? If you are using a topical retinoid cream all over your body, like in a body moisturizer, I think that is something you probably should discuss with your dermatologist or with your pediatrician. But the chances of that topical retinoid getting past your skin with limited use is very unlikely. And what our Academy of Dermatology recommends is that it's most likely safe, but obviously if you ever have any concerns, you know, speak with your doctor. You know, personal experience and you know, with most of my dermatology colleagues and moms, we started a topical retinoids after having the baby. Reasons why we avoid it during pregnancy is that it's theoretical, right? But as a physician and telling, you know, a patient who is expecting, we never want to take on that theoretical risk, even if it's just hypothetical. I think something that is so devastating, like a birth defect, which we know all retinoids can do, we just never want to take on that risk, which is why we recommend avoiding it during pregnancy. But you can certainly restart it afterwards if you choose. Okay, myth number four, retinoid purging is predictable. And what I mean by that is, I, as a dermatologist, is able to predict whether you will purge when you're either starting a topical retinoid for the first time or say, changing up your strength or if you stopped it for a period of time and you're restarting and whether I can effectively tell you whether you will purge or not. You know, one of the most commonly asked questions I see on my social media, especially on Instagram, when I talk about topical retinoids, individuals asking, I'm starting this topical retinoid, that topical retinoid, will I purge? I view that as basically someone asking, will this sunscreen work well for my skin? I really don't know. It's something that you will have to try on yourself, right? That's the same type of concept with topical retinoids and purging. So first of all, let's define purging. As a dermatologist, purging to me merely means means flaring up of acne with treatment, normally during the initial treatment phase. This can occur with any topical and or oral medication, even oral Accutane. And that is a well-known phenomenon. And in certain ways, it's a reflection that it's actually working because the medications, whether it's topical or orally, is basically working on improving your acne and bring out everything kind of in a more concerted fashion. But even things that are kind of brewing at the surface that will eventually erupt, it's just bringing them out 
all at once. Now, obviously purging is very frustrating and nobody wants their acne to flare while they're trying to treat it. But unfortunately, purging is something that really is not preventable. In some ways, you kind of have to just get through it. There are certain things that you may be able to do to really reduce the amount of purging or flaring, but it's not truly preventable in that sense. Purging is very different than retinoid irritation, which can occur anytime along your retinoid journey. You know, whether you are a novice with retinoids or say you are, you know, a pro because your skin is constantly changing and so is the environment around you and also the products you're using. So irritation can certainly occur. And I feel like a lot of the times too, irritation can certainly look bumpy and mimic acne. But true purging is really only in the context of treating acne. But even having said that, it's hard to predict whether you will flare when you're tr using topical retinoids when treating acne. You know, it's one of those things where, like I said, you just have to just take care of your skin the best you can, ease your way into topical retinoid use, and hopefully really minimize the amount of flares that you may get. Now, regardless whether it's irritation or purging, here's what you can do to really reduce that irritation and also maybe reduce the amount of flares you might get. Number one is just use gentle skincare products to really support your skin barrier. So what I mean by that is you should really try to remove all irritating ingredients from your you know, routine. Temporarily put a hold on your vitamin C, your niacinamide serum, you know, your exfoliants, and just stick to a gentle cleanser, a good moisturizer, and sunscreen. Until your skin gets used to the topical retinoids, then you can slowly add back the ingredients, but one at a time. Furthermore, you may wanna consider easing your way into using your topical retinoids. So instead of just jumping in, using it every night, I recommend starting off maybe once to three times a week, depending on your skin type, and gradually adding on additional night per week. So really working your way up to nightly, if you can, over the course of four to six weeks. And with that, hopefully you can reduce the risk of irritation and minimize the inflammation that can contribute to acne flares and hopefully reduce the amount of purging, if you will, and also hopefully allow you to tolerate a topical retinoid and also allow you to use it consistently on a long-term basis. So the last myth I keep seeing over and over again is that topical retinoids stop working over time. And that is absolutely not true. That's like telling someone with high blood pressure, taking a blood pressure medication, that their medication is gonna stop working one day. I mean, certainly, there are individuals that over time may need to add on another medication to control the blood pressure, but that is really a reflection of their blood pressure condition that worsens over time not because the medication is not working. And that's the same concept with topical retinoids. Topical retinoids are wonderful ingredients, but they're not magical. There is a limit as to how much they can do. In someone with really bad nodulocystic acne, or say really bad wrinkles that are etched into the skin, topical retinoids are only able to do so much. And to really improve all of that, you're looking at oral medications for acne and maybe Botox or fillers, right? Now, if if you are noticing improvements in the beginning with the topical retinoids and all of a sudden you feel like that improvement have plateaued, that is really the retinoids doing its max and what your skin is able to do with the topical retinoid improvement. If you're seeking more enhancement of, you know, improving fine lines or wrinkles or say if you want to get a better control of your acne, this is where you will need to talk to a dermatologist and looking into other treatment options that's going to complement a topical retinoid. You know, as long as you're using it, it's going to work on improving fine lines, wrinkles, and you know, helping to unclog pores, but it does have limits. And secondly, if you are young and have minimal skin concerns, but you're looking to use a topical retinoid for, you know, prevention of say wrinkles and fine lines, and if your skin is already pretty healthy to begin with, you're not going to get much improvements out of it. There just is not a lot of room for improvement. But what the retinoids is able to do is really help support your skin and do a lot of the preventative measures, which is you know obviously better than trying to reverse. So if you are able to, say in your 20s, use a topical retinoid long-term, when you're in your 50s, your skin is gonna look a lot younger, maybe in your 30s or 40s instead of in the 60s or 70s. 
70s. All right, guys, I hope I have demystified some of the common confusions and myths floating around on topical retinoids. Were you surprised about any of these myths? Comment below, or if there are additional myth-busting topics you want me to tackle, also let me know. Again, you can find more high-yield skin and hair care content on my social media channels, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.